Well, hello there, Aaron. Hello there, Mr. Whipple. I feel like I need to show you a little bit of Skankdom, too. Um, going ahead. Yeah. I never really wrapped my mind around this. It's like a first-person shooter, tower defense... Yeah, so, insanity. So, Coffee Stain actually touted this during their ad campaign as the world's first first-person shooter tower defense game, which I, I really thought they had done that, but I guess I guess not. <laughs> but I did a review for this uh, earlier in the year, and they already had one pack, one DLC, which was Road to Elysian, and just the other day they came out with. Runes of Brightholm, which is their, of course, second piece of DLC. So is it we... DLC or an expansion? Because, like, the way they're naming it is very expansion-like. Yeah! So, interesting you ask that. Uh, matter of fact, uh, I probably can't pull it up here, but they had uh, quite, a, quite a lot of stuff. As you can see right here, the coastline, they had four brand new levels. This was the Road to Elysian DLC. Four brand new levels, two new weapons, I believe, uh, two, I think two or three new towers, and a brand new character. And that's, that's a lot for just a piece of DLC, I think. How many bones is it running? Uh, five bucks? Five bucks? Probably. Not bad for uh, some sort of weird pseudo expansion. Yeah, Just well... Because other people charge you 40 bucks for anything. <laughs> not pointing any fingers here. Right, I, I actually think it's a little bit less than that, believe it or not, because they have a season pass too, which you can buy for less than 15, and it's it guarantees you all the DLC that comes out for the game, at least four pieces, so that's that's pretty cool. But anyway, why don't I just jump in this, I haven't even touched this DLC yet, but I can also explain a little bit about the game, and maybe I can clear it up for some people who also have no idea what to expect from this. Yeah, fill me in for sure, because um, I have no clue what the hell this is. I've seen you play it before on the Xbox, I think it was, but... Yeah, the, the demo on the Xbox 360, which, it's funny because it's only on the 360 and not on the PS3, unfortunately. Uh, so I like the, the comic book style approach to the narrative. It's kind of cool, but, I mean, to be honest, in my review, I said it was the weakest part of the game. Because you don't really... You're not connected to the characters at all, but, hey, I give them props for at least trying, because you can you can select all the characters from here, and they all have unique abilities, like Sky Autumn, you'll hear, you'll see, rather, uses a specific weapon, the assault rifle, and she has different abilities, deals more damage for each consecutive hit on the enemy, and you can double jump. Everyone's got a different primary weapon and other abilities, which I actually think is it's kind of cool. It's, it's like picking your perks, which, funny enough, this is the, the new person too, Saigon. I like her the best. She's got a, a ballista. Once you get to a, a certain level and you do earn experience in this game, you unlock different weapons. And there's, there is quite a bit, as you can see up here. Yeah, it's an overwhelming game for sure. Well, I mean, for somebody... Is, is that how it feels to you? Because you've never played something like this? Well, I mean, it's not that I ever played a tower defense game. It's just getting into it, jumping straight into an expansion, having no previous, you know, experience with it. It's not brain surgery to say it's a little overwhelming for me to sink this <laughs> all in. Especially when you're just like throwing these details, but go on ahead, go on ahead. I want to, I want to see it in action. So yeah, yeah, okay. Well, so yeah, trying not to overwhelm you fully. You can select all. Oh, these... you will. I don't even worry. I, I'm sure. <laughs> you can select all these different weapons. I like the Gatling laser a lot. Uh, My this second is a... question was going to be: When did Sanctum One come out? Uh, two years ago. <laughs> years ago. Well, all right. So let me blow your mind again. Uh, when I met with a coffee stain, Armin and Oscar are two of the major developers, they uh, <laughs> they actually developed Sanctum 1 out of a college dorm. And for a game like this to come out looking this good, Sanctum 2, it's I think that's pretty impressive. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure they had a little more access to more stuff than a college dorm. 
Well, I think now, if I remember correctly, they actually have their own offices, but they weren't operating off of much for the first game. It obviously looks a lot different. Uh, but anyway, so you have your towers. I won't go through the whole list here, but this is a combo I really enjoy. The rockets for AoE, the amp spire for increased damage. And this is a new weapon as well, the makeshift cannon. Let's see, it has a chance to deal a critical hit and stun enemies briefly, but has a chance to deactivate itself momentarily. Good all around tower. Well, why don't I show it off? And yeah. there's a bunch of perks too. It takes a while to level up in this game. Again, I won't go through all the perks here, but if I hit 23, 24, 25, I believe yeah, they increased the level cap from the last DLC to 25, and the new DLC uh, goes up to 30. So we'll, we'll see what this brings. So why don't I just jump in here? So I have a question. Do you have any experience with the metagame of this? Oh, what do you mean, metagame? Well, as in... The game, like, as in the, you know, the person who just continually plays the game, even after everything's new, seeing how the new stuff settles in, that's always kind of the interesting part of expanding on a game, is seeing how, you know, what new stuff makes a difference, what old stuff changes, what old stuff becomes useful again, as any right, okay. insight on that, and you just killed yourself. I, I did, but it's, it's good for the moment. So, <laughs> before I start placing my blocks and such to answer your question... Yeah, when the game first came out, there was a couple of glitches. The Amp Spire, this one right here that I'm trying to put down just to show you. So when you put your cursor over it, that radius that's in it, all towers that are within that circle, you can probably see it better if I hold tab here, anything that's in that circle is increased, the damage is increased by like 13%. And it, as I upgrade it, that number increases. So, on one of the levels that, that was really difficult, people would just try and pump this thing up to ridiculous amounts. I, I remember them putting like five or six amp towers down, and they just have one tower just sitting right next to it, like a scatter laser turret or something basic, and it would do a quadrillion damage, and people would beat all the levels just doing stuff like that. So, they have patched it. Uh, not sure what's going on right now for the best kind of meta, but I like I like the setup from the rockets. Again, as you can see, you hold tab down, you can get the gist of where it's going to attack. Its radius as you increase it, it grows. Kind of cool. I like cool. I like putting the stuff down to try and obviously maze the opponents. But since this is a new map to me, I just I like to I like to gain my bearings for a game like this. You're no stranger to tower defense games, right? So that's the that's kind of the secret. You still have to try and maze them when you can. Well, how soon does this thing get started then? <laughs> that is always the question. All right, so I need to put down these tower bases, and then I can put junk on top of them. So let's just to see what this new stuff is. We'll be fighting new opponents as well, I'm sure. To you, everything will be new, though. Uh, we'll do this. Let's see. So, I'd like to say, that little robot drives me insane. Uh, yeah, so this, you this little... You just, tell, just aesthetically, too many people said, oh, we gotta make this guy adorable. That yeah. way the fans will love him, and I can just see <laughs> stupid little face. Well, it's actually a late perk that you can get from the last expansion, or a DLC, rather. The G2 robot. He gets in these people's faces, so he buys you a little bit extra time, and he does damage as well. So he's actually kind of useful. I imagine they dreamed of making plushies of him. Yeah, you're probably right. Pretty sure they're out there. One. Uh, matter of fact, been. I think you would appreciate this out of out of everybody. So you hate this guy, right? This little stupid doll. Actually, where, where, where'd he go? Hate's a strong word, but... Yeah. Alright, so you dislike him strongly. Well, as you can see, he is... Passionately. He is running up here. And he is gonna just do his thing. Yeah. I actually... <laughs> 
when I warped into tower, he was standing underneath it, so it, it killed him. Hmm. Yeah. All right, let's let's get the first wave going. So if you stare straight ahead, you can see the monsters that are coming up. These are just basic walkers. So we'll see. I like this new character, Saigon, because you can charge up the crossbow. And yes, you can shoot them in the glowing weak points. To which my aim is not fantastic right now. And the last crossbow bolt is insanely powerful. I'm a fan of numbers popping out of things when you shoot them. Yes. Alright, so there, there's our little dude making amends for me killing him. You also don't have to reload in this game. It does it automatically. And you can, while you're firing another weapon, it's, it's good. Whoa. See, like that, it's reloading right now, my thing. I'll just use this new weapon. And my crossbow will be reloaded by the time I decide to go back to it. Oh, I thought you said when you know said no unreload, uh, no reloading. I'm thinking like Unreal Tournament, no reloading. Like there will be no reloading because there's nothing to reload. <laughs> well, you have to, so you can switch between stuff. All right, so this turret's at level two. I still don't know what this thing does. And oh wow, so this is this is one of the first new enemies. I do not know what that thing is called, but there are twelve of them coming out, and that scares the hell out of me. So why don't we just do a little maze action and see what this thing is going to do. I'll put one of these up here. Alright. I am cool with that. Alright, so G2 man's going to give us a hand here. I don't know if I like this new weapon. Then again, Hagen is more of the melee up close. Dude, oh goodness, they're like little jumping jerks. They're probably going to be able to just jump over this whole thing. Yep, oh my god. That is infuriating. Uh, yeah, this is not going to be good. Got him. So is this DLC out yet? Yeah, this DLC is out now, which is nice. It's like a day old. Oh my god. This is bad. So the weapons that I have are not very good at killing these things. I am trying my damnedest. Alright, so my G2 bot will help a little more. Okay, well, so I take it back. The saw blade thing's alright. That was a quick change of my heart. Uh, sometimes you just don't know at first. You can shoot it. The, the secondary fire, like Unreal Tournament, does different things. It just sort of sticks on them. Oh goodness! <laughs> he almost got to the core. These waves are the most dangerous because now I'm timed. If you can see it right up there. Yeah. Yeah. So I need to be. I need to be a little quick. All right. Let's. Continue this maze. Still not sure about these things. But I'll make another one here. Finish upgrading him. Alright, this will at least be somewhat effective. Ah, oh, I'm 20 away. Alright, so these creatures that are coming out here. This is going to be a fast wave. Not good. If the rhino touches you, you are basically dead. 
so that's never a good thing either. Uh oh. Oh my god. Yes, yeah, so this is gonna be a troublesome wave. Oh wow, these things are coming down here now. Uh, I did not check like I should have. Yeah. I don't know what a vision of a good game looks like, but I don't think this is it. <laughs> Goodness. The weapons are very... Th th this whole thing, I, like I know, it's probably the Unreal Engine. I'm just saying it. The aesthetic design of it is very Unreal-ish. You can definitely tell. All right, I did not realize there was going to be another entranceway. That is not that is not grand. So, this is what I'm going to do. Probably should have looked at that a little bit better. Uh, one of the things I do enjoy about this game is you are not penalized for selling your stuff. There's hardcore modes, of course, that make that reality, and it is tough. So we're going to bring this stuff down there, so I can just funnel them into, well, the bottleneck. I think what I appreciate about Sanctum more so than any other tower defense game is the fact that it actually requires you to play instead of just getting that set up where maybe on your phone, I think you said this to me a long time ago, like Robo Defense, you can just let that game play. Listen, I will sit here and do a three hour let's play of Robo Defense. Don't you knock Robo Defense. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's make it, this it, work. Realistically, that game's more like Power Fantasy and Tower Defense. Than anything else, where you could just set up everything and walk away, come back, check on it, make minor adjustments, and continue. All right, now that thing has to go that way, and I'll be able to build my kill box right here, which should be spectacular. See if I can pull it off. So, do you have any concerns about this game being a first time? Well, I guess the first time you've actually seen it in action. Um, my, I don't know. I, I don't want to be rude, but it does not look like my cup of tea. Well, what doesn't attract? you do a game like this? Um, I don't know. Just... One, probably because it's untraditional. I'm not trying to be devil, devil's advocate here on top of that, but... Very particular about my tower defense games. I mean, I'm sure I, I'd try it one day. I believe I tried it when you were here. Oh, and, and there's there's the guy getting in the way, so he's dead. But he'll respond. It's funny watching his little stupid body rag doll. <laughs> Get out of here. So I am also very particular about the way that certain things are set up in a tower defense game. I That's why I praise Coffee Stain's game design aesthetics. Just, uh, just give people the tools to make the stuff that they want to and don't, don't penalize them for you know, making just one mistake. If you want it hardcore, you know they've got a mode for that. It's nice. All right, we're gonna just go this way. All right, so now I've got a giant maze. Like, it is ridiculous. Let's go ahead and uh, where's a good place to set up? I am gonna say the best place is gonna be right here. 
Now this is what I always test. I put down the amps fire. And I'll upgrade it to level 3. Because it's radius increases. Alright. There we go. Alright, so this would cover exactly... Uh, Alright, so this isn't as good of a place. That's the one thing that kind of sucks. Sometimes you're not sure of which place to put it. And it ends up harming you. Well, it doesn't really harm you, but it just takes time to rebuild all that crap. Yeah. And the drones can go through armored targets, which you're about to see with the armored walker. So we're on wave 4 of 10. I'll go ahead and put one down there, two down there. We'll do a cannon here. Maybe another cannon. As long as they're all in that radius, if they have that blue hue on them, then they're affected. Maybe this will work. Let's make this. Alright, good stuff. We'll start this wave. Now, you're saying you're very particular about tower defense games. Yeah, and it, 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 it's hard because I, don't, I can't really describe the kind of tower defense game I'd like. Just something I find engaging. You're shooting that dude in his anus, though. Yeah, well, that's where the blinking weak spot is. Now, look at the screen. Like, look at that radar. That is a ton of dudes. Yeah, and one thing I don't find... I don't know, maybe you're doing it wrong. That's not what I'm gonna say it is, but the tower defending seems to be, uh... Tertiary to the oh you shooting dudes right yeah. and, and, and that's something that you have to get used to as well you cannot you cannot just rely on towers in this game you have to do a lot of the work like you'll you'll never be able to just stand there all right so now they're about to get into my my zone yeah but that makes it more to me seem like more of a horde mode than a tower defense game. Yeah, and, I mean that—that's a plus for some, minus for some thing, I imagine. It's funny you bring that up, though, because that was something I think this game was criticized for when it initially came out, because it was so different than Sanctum One. And for someone who has not ever played this game and doesn't really know, well, now you know what it is to say that. I think that's telling. Still. The direction they took this, I think, is kind of neat. Just because you can play it with four people, it's it's fun. Yeah, it's just you know, kind of just running around shooting dudes with four of the people is a is an experience that can be had in many many platforms. And just from my perspective here, again, I haven't really played it. I'm just observing it, but. You can the, that that's an experience that can be had on a lot of other games. I mean, it's different every time, and I imagine it could get a little crazy with four people dropping bridges. But <laughs> yeah, it gets it gets a lot harder, obviously. The crack shot right now. Oh, I missed. Yeah, one of the, these new guns, they're alright. Or it seems okay. I'd probably use it with a different character. Alright, so wave five of, five of ten. 
This is the best part. When you finally figure out exactly what you're going to do as the level changes it up, uh, you get a lot more comfortable, obviously. Let's, uh, let's see here. So we'll look around. We've got some bobbleheads, eight of them coming, and 12 of those jumping demon things. Why don't we go ahead and upgrade this? Oh yeah, and it also looks like you can you can change the targeting. So closest, least health, most health, closest. So they've got all the, the stuff that makes a, a good tower defense in here. I think that you just have to... It's more skillful. You actually have to think about what you're going to be bringing, especially if there's people who are going to pop into the game. I think that's worth something. Hmm. I guess. <laughs> Alright, here they come. These bobbleheads, you can only shoot them in the top. Fortunately, I have one of the best weapons in the game to kill them. Pretty good. If you do not have the sufficient weaponry to destroy these things, they are the bane of your existence. So while these things are just running down here... <laughs> What other kind of games... You're saying the cooperative experience right. in shooters oh. is... It's, it's, it's obvious... Yeah, it's obviously very prolific in, well, the genre. Do you not think that the, a first-person shooter fits the tower defense formula that well to you? Well, that's not what I'm saying, because I'm sure it could work. And I'm sure this works, too. I'm just saying it's just something that I don't know it's just does not strike me but I mean just that that's probably unfamiliarity anyway mm. because any you know the and, and also you have to just remember I'm very I'm like I'm particular with my tastes I don't like I hardly play first person shooters nowadays like I booted up Battlefield 3 because I got it from the the humble uh EA pack and I played it for like 20 minutes and I'm like okay this is stupid and just moved on <laughs> Right. So the, this is a hard sell for me. I'm telling you that right now because I actually don't even really care about shooters right now. Which is why I would prefer something more akin to a traditional tower defense. Mm. How do you feel about... Now what would you say if... Let's just say that this game was free to play. And I bring, I bring that up because I'm sure at this point you've heard of the debacle that's surrounding Plants vs. Zombies 2. Yeah, which I actually played a little bit of. How is it? It's Plants vs. Zombies. Like, it's, it's hard to say anything because it's exactly what you expect it to be. Like, you plant, there, there, there's new plants, there's new zombies, it's Plants vs. Zombies. Funny enough, I'm playing on an iPod Touch, and I it's not 3G, so it's not my iPhone or nothing, so I can't even do the microtransactions if I wanted to, because it has to be linked to a Wi-Fi account when I'm playing it, and I'm probably usually playing it on the bus, so... Huh. I'm immune to that. Interesting. I mean, it, it, it is a bit of a grind though it's it's way grindier than the first game making you replay levels but well see that's what i was worried about yeah. because i i don't have an iphone i don't have an ipod or any of those things i was in the crowd where i was really upset that i guess the, the game that really got that that game popular started out on the pc and it's not there i'm sure it'll eventually be yeah it's 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 probably just business just Apple buying the exclusivity to that because honestly if, if you want to play Plants vs. Zombies you pick up anything with a power cable running into it and I'm sure you it, it'll play Plants vs. Zombies right
like I can pick up like a toaster and I'm sure it'll have like I, I saw that Plants vs Zombies was out on Blackberries. That's like the defining sign of like wow, this is literally out on freaking everything. <laughs> Just when it comes to microtransactions and such, I, I play a bunch of free-to-play titles. and It does seem like that's where a certain market is going now. I just wonder if stuff like this would bring in consumers who normally hate like shooter genres for this game and you, if they'd give it a chance if it was just free-to-play. Are you attracted to that model at all? Oh, God. Um, very... It, it has to be well done because they. Well, look at that. It's all right. I killed him. The, the the thing about free to play games is they have to engage me. Like, there's one free to play game I'm actually very anticipatory of, and that's actually Hearthstone, because it looks like a fun card game and like free to play fits the card game format perfectly. Of just one more pack, one more pack, one more pack sort of mentality. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to see, like, I'm probably going to wait for Hearthstone to come out and then wait, like, a couple of weeks and see how despicable they are with the odds. Because that can be a really heinous thing to say, to, to hide, like, say, oh, yeah, your chance of getting this card is one in a hundred. And I also read that there's no trading system for it set up yet. And I, and then they're going to add in the real money auction house for the cards. They, I actually, uh -oh. show shocked if that <laughs> happened I, at all but yeah I, I don't know just the, the, the free to play thing is such a weird little market because it, it, it's it has to be done right there's a few free to play games I games I actually play I would say I play I played a lot of Jetpack Joyride and back when it was cool I played a little of Angry Birds and they're they're less of a despicable way. It's just like, oh, well, you just get ads in your way in between levels. That I can deal with. It's like a commercial, and I can. that's a very cheap cost to pay a game and just pay a dollar to get it free. That's a decent free-to-play model. But stuff like Plants vs. Zombies 2, and it's expensive. Some of the stuff's expensive. It's like $3 and up. Just like, oh, you can just clear this bonus, and it does become pay-to-win. Ma Mass Effect 3's multiplayer would have been justifiable as a free-to-play game, like, standalone, if it was released. But the fact that they had the free-to-play model in a $60 game also is complete bullshit. Yeah, in a lot of ways, for sure. But again, yeah. I, I, I bring this up because sometimes, I, it sometimes people play things just because, hey, it is free, let's try it out, let's just see. Yeah, it depends on how the free-to-play is implemented. Like, if it's like, oh, yeah, you want to buy this tower? One dollar. Then maybe not so much I would play this. And I... I don't know. <laughs> Let's see what these towers do to this horde. Oh, man, so that's a soaker up here. You haven't seen these things yet. They uh, get huge. It takes so many hits. You want a, a weapon that fires fast and does a little bit of damage over time, and they end up getting enormous. Oh, we'll see them come on down here in just a second. Well, I'm actually really glad then that we're doing this because I, I really like this game a lot. It, it's one of those things where I also enjoy Orcs Must Die. I can... It's just something that I can load up, I can play around of it. Orcs Must Die is a little bit faster than this game. Yeah, I, I would say I'd probably play Orcs Must Die before this, but Orcs Must, Must Die seems way more arcadey than this. Yes, agreed. And that's appealing to me. Yes, it, it is very appealing. But the reason why I, I play this game, I like... I'm surprised that nobody's jumped in this game. I think I have it set on public. I do like the challenge that it presents because it's a lot harder than a typical tower defense game. It's not easy to beat these levels, especially on the first try. I enjoy the perk system. I, I like how 
I, I just, I like the formula. I'm not big on the first person shooter genre right now either, because it's oversaturated for obvious reasons. But I think that it's fun enough and challenging enough to warrant the low price that they're asking for. You know, f 15 bucks for something like this. You can, you can throw, I don't know, I, I put like 40 hours into this game so far. I've done quite a bit. I'll go ahead and spend some of this extra cash. Actually, the last free-to-play game I played that's an actual PC and not like on a phone game or something was, oh Christ, what was it? The, it's, um, it's not a MOBA. It was a dungeon crawler. Path of Exile. Path of Exile, that's right. Yeah, that's, that's a yeah. great game. That's a surprisingly great game. Yeah, but like I, I, I played it and I was like, wait a minute, I have Torchlight 2, and then I turned it off. <laughs> Torchlight 2 is fun also, but Path of Exile has some fantastic ideas. I like how there's no money in that game, it's just a barter system. I'm about to see this guy's head grow. Will there ever be a first-person shooter game that you'll play? Are you excited about any of the upcoming titles like Destiny, Killzone? Kill Titanfall Zone. actually looks pretty cool. Titanfall, huh? Yeah, I like this a little more. I want to see where Destiny goes. I uh, wasn't really impressed with Destiny's uh, E3 showing. It looks alright. It, it, I think Borderlands. It sucks to say this, but they showed it in too raw of a state. And I mean, I know that the, that's what they were going for, which is, hey, we're going to show what the game actually looks like instead of this, you know... It's, it's, like, it's like fast food. Like, when you see the fast food commercials, you, you know, they glam the food up and they make it look all nice and that's what other most devs do with their game and then you actually go to the fast food restaurant and you buy it and you get what you really get <laughs> and uh, Bungie kind of showed it in his real form there's nothing wrong with that I sort of appreciate it when some developers show it in their raw form just because you know they're really working on it and it's at that unfinished state it really does bother you that much. Well, for like a massive, like... <laughs> for as much as they're hyping it up, yeah, you'd expect something a little fancy, flashier. But I'm still interested in Destiny. I want to see what it is. You know, it, it is like a realistic showing of what the game is. And I do appreciate that. But it... I hate to be that guy, but for business... Probably wasn't the best move. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it makes sense that it's a legitimate reason to maybe hate on a title just a little bit. These hovers always give me the hardest problem, but I'll I'll be honest right now. I am loving these makeshift cannons. They can stun even the hovers. That is fantastic. Alright, so we've got 20 little dicklings, and... Yeah. Why don't we just go ahead and we'll upgrade this. Probably wasn't worth it, but... Wish there was fine. a way I could show you some of the Plants vs. Zombies too. So I've seen it played, and I thought it's fine, but it did it did feel, it seemed like it was really grindy. But yeah, I, from what I played, it, it, it's just like, oh, play this level again, play this level, but with a twist. I mean, 
it's weird because like it bugs me, but then it's like it's fucking plants versus zombies. Every stage is the same. Oh shoot! These things are here. Like the original Plants vs. Zombies, one thing I really hated about it that there was no free play mode until you beat the game. So whenever I got it on a brand new device, and I own way more, way too many copies of that game than I like to admit on way too many systems. <laughs> because like every time I see it on sale, I'm like, oh, I spent three bucks on fucking Plants vs. Zombies. Look at all these things. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. No. I think I'll, I think I'm gonna survive it. Beautiful. Is this the last wave? Uh, this is gonna be the last wave right here. Okay, it's not completed. Ten out of ten. It's ten out of ten incoming. I got it. Yes. That always confuses me in some tower defense games. Like, hundred out of hundred means I did it, or this is the last one. Yeah, so I'm I'm very pleased with how they ended up doing Sanctum, just because it's it's so different. Even if it is alienating the people who are just fans of Sanctum One, it, that was more of a traditional tower defense, but still a first person you know, tower defense like this one. This is just more structured, I suppose. Uh, I'm just gonna go for it. I've got ten of those weird things and. Me these eh, like eight and eight. I think we'll be all set. I almost have full health in the core anyway. I do think the free to play formula fits some games. I don't know how it would fit in something like this. Maybe there's an obvious way, and then there's a clever way that nobody knows. Yeah. You could obviously buy weapons. Towers. Yeah, like buy weapons, buy towers, buy upgrades. What I'd like to see is the game go free to play and kind of have like the game, the entire entirety of the game be free, but like release frequent, like kind of like how Guild Wars does or used to do, or still does. I haven't been keeping up with it. Yeah, they still do it. Which is like an expansion every year religiously. So you get, you know, your core base spending 40 bucks annually on your game, you're giving them more stuff, and then you're giving them the game for free. Or you want to be cynical, the perception of it being free. Wow, this is... This is... This is tough. But, I think I'm going to do it. Yeah, there... <laughs> It's definitely not your typical tower defense when the whole screen isn't covered in your towers. <laughs> I don't know, you're, you're pretty up there. I have exactly, uh, I think I have seven towers set up. That's it. It's all about strategery. Yeah, but then at what point is it even considered a tower defense game in just a shooting gallery? Again, why I would play, and um, I will buy Orcs Must Die too when it's on sale. Right, so I just unlocked a brand new perk: deals a thousand damage in area around an enemy when you damage it. Enemies that take damage from this will take additional damage over time. So that is a pretty sweet perk. So we'll just we'll leave this game for the moment. That, that other tower is it's pretty awesome 
let's let's go ahead and take a look at what's in here. Uh, yeah, I mean, so there's there's three other levels. Obviously, we won't go through them right now, but why don't we just take a look and see what this one at least appears as? There is another tower. I just like to see, and we could probably call it a day with this anyway. Yeah. What uh? What next? I don't know. We'll see. I haven't beat Saints Row 4 yet, but I think I'm a little close to the end of that game. Oh, great. So there's some kind of infected, infested Terran. What the flippin' fudge is that? Quality riding, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Alright, let's check out this new one. Uh, Rupture Mines. Yeah, it's a good free-to-play game. Salty bet. Salty bet. By the way, I, out of all the games I played this year, I've learned so much about myself through that, and I'm, I'm not even joking. How like malicious and obsessive I can get over fake dollars that you can't spend on. <laughs> it's pretty interesting. Certainly is an experiment in something. I'm just gonna go ahead and set this up. Let's see what these rupture mines can do. Rupture mines. Uh. So there are deployable items here as this comes down from the heavens. All right. So it does damage based on the distance that an enemy travels. Interesting. I don't know what to think of that. Why don't I... I'll throw one down here. And one down here. There's just a normal mine dispenser. I used that for a while. <laughs> the trick is to get them early because every time you upgrade it, it gives you a few extra mines. So you can just have the entire map just littered with those things. And the answer is no, they do not respawn. Do your thing. Yeah, actually, in uh, other discussions, I mean, let me give you a uh, post Saints Row 4 stream uh, opinion on it. It's alright. I like it, but. It's alright. I can understand the criticism behind it. It's not as engaging as uh, the other Saints games, and it has some like weird design spots in it too. Hmm. Like, for example, your character is so powerful that why would like there's some stuff that like there's literally no point to upgrading, and a, a lot of the upgrades are just straight up not compelling. Like, why would you want to upgrade your gang members and your homies and stuff like that? Like, it takes a weird turn. What about the whole car thing? Yeah, like they that that same thing. It's like you can run faster than cars and you gain unlimited stamina fairly early in the game. So there's that's your me main method of transportation, but you can like, oh, you want to get hydraulics in every car you jump in? No, cuz I will never jump in a car. And then um it kind of pulls a bit of a forced unleash on uh, on you, and I'm not very fond of that. And uh, what by that I mean their method of challenging the player is to take away power, and I don't like it. Hmm. Well, why don't we go ahead and we'll jump out of this. But I I'd say that this seems to be like another solid D piece of DLC for Sanctum Two. I like. I'm not really sure about these rupture mines. I probably won't use them too much, only if there's other people in the game. 
but I like the new weapon and one of the new towers there, the makeshift thing. It seems pretty good, and I, I just, I don't know about you, Aaron, but I, I really do like to see companies just continuously supporting games like this. It's, it's great to see them constantly rolling out different pieces of content. Yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's a good way to, again, like just show their support in keeping games like this alive that would probably be quickly forgotten under any other circumstance. But yeah, just my honest opinion. I don't doubt it would be fun, just doesn't look like something I'd sit down and play. This is me purely judging it on what I've seen today and what I've seen before. By the way, do you see that creature? Yeah. That is... That's pretty bad cool. news. Oh. <laughs> That's pretty pretty cool and bad news. <laughs> well, on that note, let's do it. Let's get out of here.